Praise the Lord. Let's stand and worship the Lord tonight. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the fiery line. If you're in the brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the fiery line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die fighting, it is no disgrace. Covered in the service, he will find no place. So keep on the fiery line. Well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. Oh, God, God will only use the soldier he can trust. Keep on the fiery line. If you wear a crown that bear the cross, you must. Keep on the fiery line. Life is but to labor for the master here. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Great shall be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the fiery line. Oh, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. Oh, when we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad, keep on the fiery line. And how will praise the Savior for the calling? Keep on the fiery line. When they see this world, then we have helped to end. Leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin. Grace and love to welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the fiery line. Oh, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. Oh, you well, must you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. And when we get to heaven, brother, we'll be so glad. Keep on the fiery line. And how will praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the fiery line. Well, when we see the souls that we have held to win. Leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin. With a shout of welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the fiery line. Oh, you well, must you fight. fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. Oh, well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the fiery line. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Psalm 60, verse 1, Isaiah 60, verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Aren't you glad as we celebrate the Christmas season that the light 
Jesus has come. And it's our job to rise and let the light shine within our hearts and our lives. Let's just lift up our hands and worship and praise him and magnify him tonight. For he is worthy to be praised, worthy to be worshipped, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Father, Lord, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is come. Hallelujah. We come tonight, Lord. Let your light to shine among us tonight. Meet every need and meet every situation tonight, Lord. We need your touch, Lord. We pray that you bless every part of the service tonight, oh Lord, thy perfect will to be done, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing and let's worship the Lord tonight. time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before your God come Now is the time to worship, come, now is the time to give your heart, come, just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God. confess you are God one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now so willingly we choose to surrender our lives and willingly our knees will bow with all our hearts soul mind and strength we gladly choose you now come Oh, now, now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Oh, just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. And one day every knee will bow. You're still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. So willingly we choose to surrender our lives. And willingly our knees will bow. With all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. Come. Now is the time to worship, come, and now is the time to give your heart, come, just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. Oh, 
a praise for that tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. Welcome to our Sunday night service, a very special night for us as we're kicking off the Christmas season. And I am thankful for the Savior that was born that very first Christmas morning. Because of Jesus, life is different now. Can you say amen for that? And I'm thankful for that tonight. Without any further ado, uh, we're going to give a part of our service tonight over to our Amplified Children's Ministries, our Children's Church Group under the direction of Sister Nikki Jarvis, and they have a, uh, a presentation of the Christmas story uh, through a shadow box drama, and I believe uh, they should almost be back there and ready. I think I need to move this pulpit was the only instructions that I was given. So would you make them welcome? Give them a hand clap. They're nervous, and I know that um, God can be with them and help them and, and strengthen them, and uh, if you've ever been in their shoes, you know exactly what they're feeling right about now. But they've practiced, and I know God's going to help them. And we are delighted that they get to do this for us tonight.
in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the six months for her who was called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. should be registered. This census first took place while Cyrenius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothing and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us.
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. They presented gifts to him, 
gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Let's give them one more hand tonight. Good job, guys. Aren't you thankful? <laughs> Aren't you thankful for the birth of Jesus tonight? And didn't they do a wonderful job portraying that? It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of lights and a little bit of sheets. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Roger to come and our musicians to return to the platform. And we're going to uh, sing. And while we're singing, you're going to see folks behind us moving and, and taking things down and getting us ready to, to continue on with our service tonight. And uh, Brother Roger, if you'll grab one of those black stands and uh, we'll get the pulpit and all that moved back. Uh, let's stand together tonight and let's sing a song of uh, the Christmas season. And uh, page number 366, I think it is. And uh, let's sing it together tonight. I was, um, I was a little bit amused at those uh, shepherds. They weren't Pentecostal shepherds, were they? <laughs> so it brought, it brought to mind the title of this song, It Is Silent Night. They were quiet about it. <laughs> that was wonderful. I really enjoyed that. Do you remember the anticipation that you had when you were their age and you did these things in church? I hope you have a memory of that. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's heart touching. It makes you think about the real reason for the real season that we're celebrating. It's not Kwanzaa. It's not all these other things that are being honored. But it's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what this silent night is about. Hallelujah. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy so 
tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sun, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly Oh, sing Alleluia, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born, silent night. Holy time, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Sing that third one again. Silent night, holy night. Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. What a wonderful night it was when Jesus was born onto this earth to forgive men of their sins and forgive the transgressions of the world and I'm thankful that our kids group has been able to kick us off in the holiday season tonight and uh, it's not about presence under a tree but it is about the present that died on a tree amen and I'm thankful for that tonight I do want to remind you that after service tonight uh, there will be a uh, live nativity meeting right here in the main sanctuary I do want to remind you about the events this week and then also next Sunday night uh, at this time we will be meeting at the Jesse Brock Center in Winter Garden, the address is in your bulletin. And uh, for those that grew up in this area, it's the old elementary school there in Winter Garden on Dillard Street. But we will begin promptly at 6 o'clock next Sunday night for our annual Okoe Church of God Christmas banquet. The church will take care of providing two types of meat, all of the beverages and all of the paper goods. And uh, we'll eat with that whatever you want to bring. And I gave you my list of what I want this morning. Amen. And so uh, we'll begin at 6 o'clock next Sunday night. Uh, so no service here. It's been moved to Jesse Brock Center, and uh, we'll have plenty. We're setting up for 160, I do believe, and so we'll have plenty of room, plenty of walking room, plenty of aisle space, all of those things. So uh, next Sunday night at the Jesse Brock Center, you want to be there with us. The Cargill family will be with us. Uh, they'll be singing songs of the season, some special things that are planned next Sunday night. So make sure that you're there with us uh, at 6 o'clock next Sunday night. Are you glad to be in church tonight? 
Amen. I'm glad to be here as well. So thankful for what the Lord has done. I'm going to ask the ushers, if they would, to get ready now to wait upon you. Give you an opportunity to worship in your giving tonight. Thank you for how you responded this morning. And uh, let's give another good offering tonight. If you didn't get a chance to uh, uh, get your tithes in this morning, if you'll take care of that tonight, make sure we start the month off good. Uh, that would be most appreciative. And uh, we mentioned all the students that were up here, but I heard, I heard, other, I knew other voices. I know there was other people behind the backdrop tonight. And I want to say publicly to those adults that helped, thank you so much. The students in the sound room, the narrator, the costume for everybody just did a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, it, it goes by a whole lot faster with the night of. Amen. They've been practicing, practicing, practicing. And, uh, and, and if you've done these, you've been through them enough that you know. I said, look, we'll give you a part of our Sunday night service. That way you don't feel the load of having to do the whole service. Because uh, it's a lot of responsibility. So I'm so thankful for what God is doing. This is Sister Nikki's first Christmas season with us as Amplified Director. And I think she's done a wonderful job. She's pulled every... <laughs> Amen. We won't ask her how she feels about leading us for next Christmas season. We'll let her get through the new year first. Amen. And uh, I, I, uh, I uh, have been there, and what a wonderful job. And it was hard for pastor tonight. I have no kids in children's church. And so I had no business to be here early to find out what the deal was. I have no kids. Pastor Ricky was the staff pastor assigned to this project, so he's handled that with them. And uh, it just felt odd that we didn't have any babies in children's church. Um, but all of our babies are older than that, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. And uh, just so thankful. And I, I could recognize some of your kids through the shadow. I thought, yep, they're so-and-so, they're so-and-so. You know, we just have a look about us that even a shadow can't get rid of. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful night. Let's give a good offering tonight. And uh, ask the Lord just to bless us. After the offering, uh, Mariah will be coming to sing to you. And then our youth choir is coming. And then uh, after that, I'm just going to spend a few moments uh, in just opening up this Christmas season to us. Uh, so let's just worship the Lord tonight. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to be back in your house on a Sunday night. Thank you, Lord, for our students and our junior students that have portrayed the gospel message through Shadow Box. Lord, what a wonderful night it has already been. I pray you'll bless this offering, multiply it for the intended use. Let us be able, Lord, to do what you've called us to do. And we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Christ, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give to the Lord tonight. Well, let's sing it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Amen. Thank you for your giving tonight. Worship with Mariah as she sings tonight. Baby. 
babe inside and I wondered what I've done Holy Father you have come and chosen me now to carry your son I am waiting silent prayer I am frightened by the Lord I bear in a world as cold as stone must I walk this path alone be with me
Sounds a little bit like from going from here to there. Amen. Amen. I like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word tonight. Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1. Won't keep you too long tonight. We've already had a full jam-packed service. Amen. Amen. I like it. Amen. I like it. But if you'll allow me just for a few moments. And uh, Sister Wendy, 15 minutes. Time me after I pray. Hey, don't count till after you pray. Amen. Everything before prayer is free. After I say amen, 15 minutes, give me, the, give me the look. Give me the look. Don't mean I'll listen to it. All you husbands know. Give me the look. Just as I, I knew we were headed, we have quickly embraced the Christmas season at our church as of tonight. I wanted to take a few moments and just unwrap some of this out of Matthew chapter 1. And uh, let us remember why we believe what we believe. And uh, hopefully the Spirit of God will help me tonight. Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse number 18. The birth of Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to put her away public, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold... A virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. For just a few moments, 15, if I pay attention to Sister Wendy, I'm going to unwrap this thought. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Using the phrase there from Matthew chapter 1, verse number 18. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the night that we've already had in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord, for the birth of your Son and of our Savior through a virgin birth, God, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Pray, God, that you'll help us now and let this night kick off our Christmas season as we lift up the name of Jesus and we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Christ, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. And amen tonight. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Matthew and Luke uh, give a detailed description of the birth of Jesus. The book of Matthew and the book of Luke. The book of Mark and the book of John do not. They talk more about his earthly ministry while he roamed the earth. And all things considered, Matthew describes the events before during and after his birth, and better than Luke does in his gospel narrative. Matthew begins by saying in verse 18 of chapter 1, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. And what he is saying is that this is the way it happened. So when somebody asks you this Christmas season what you believe and why you believe it, you don't have to remember it all up here. You can, and it's good to do that. But flip over to Matthew chapter number eight, chapter number one. Go to verse number eighteen, and you just begin right where I begin. The, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, and you allow the Spirit of God to unfold the pages of history to you, and you allow the Spirit of God to tell you how and why we celebrate Jesus. First of all, tonight, he was saying the book of Matthew, moved upon by the Spirit of God, was saying that Jesus Christ was virgin born. You need not forget the importance of Jesus being virgin born. 
He is not equal to any other man. He did not come through the regular channels of birth that you and I came through. Uh, it is important and we must not forget that he was virgin born. Uh, some say that he was a good man but not divine. Uh, but the scriptures tell us that when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh, now we must realize that this is very different. It had never happened in time before. It has never happened happened since the birth of Jesus since but I can assure you that I believe this book tells me about heaven this book tells me about hell this book tells me about the blessings and the wondrous life that I can live and if I believe all of that I must also believe that Jesus was virgin born the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Not of man. I think one place of Scripture we find Him called the Son of Woman. Different message, different thought. But was not born through natural process like you and I were born. But the Son of of God. It was the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Uh, the assumption of a human form and nature. Incarnate means uh, embodied in the flesh in human form. Uh, in theory, it was the union of God in man in the form uh, and in the life of Jesus Christ. And the Word was made flesh according to John chapter number 1 and dwelt among us. Uh, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of mercy. Do not forget, Jesus was virgin born. Number two tonight, Matthew is also telling us that Joseph was the husband of Mary, but not the father of Jesus. Aren't you thankful for his heavenly father tonight? Joseph was the husband of Mary, but not the father of Jesus. Joseph, according to Scripture, was a just man, not willing to make Mary a public example, and was minded to put her away privately. But not wanting to make, but not wanting to put her away to be called a prostitute and to be subjected to the law according to Deuteronomy. He, he began to, to I, I can just imagine what, what did Joseph go through knowing that his wife was pregnant? What was it like to be in that bedroom that night when the angel of the Lord, I mean just think about this for a moment. A man sleeping, the angel shows up and says, That woman you're fixing to marry, oh, she's pregnant. She's with child. Now, that was me and my wife before we got married. Somebody has some explaining to do. Angel shows up and says, It's all right, buddy. Go for it. That that has been conceived inside of her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to just tell you, that brings on a whole nother layer. I'm fixing to marry the woman that's been con that has a baby conceived in her by the, by, the, by the Holy Ghost? I might want to pray a little more, not for Mary, but for me. Amen? <laughs> that that is conceived in her is, that, is of the Holy Ghost. Mary, 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 Mary. Joseph was the husband of Mary but not the father of Jesus Joseph did not understand he was greatly troubled he knew he could not be the father behold a virgin shall conceive according to Isaiah chapter 7 and bear a son and shall call isn't it amazing how the Lord can do whatever the Lord needs to do to bring his word to pass and we worry how he's going to take care of our little needs we worry how he's going to help us with our health and with our finances and with our difficulties. Honey, if, 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 he, can, if he can use a virgin uh, and he can have uh, the child inside of her known as Jesus Christ uh, be conceived by the Holy Ghost uh, and if he can overcome the laws of science and nature and if he can do all of that, he can take care of your need tonight. Amen. Joseph, the husband of Mary, but not the father of Jesus. Number three tonight, Matthew's telling us there was uh, some divine intervention. I'm thankful we can use the word divine intervention there. Divine intervention. What do I mean by that? Verse 21, while Joseph 
thought on these things. Honey, I bet he was doing some thinking. What have I got myself into? I'm a just man, and, and, and she's supposed to be a virgin, and I, I'm supposed to be getting married here shortly, and all these things. Be, if, you've not been, if you've not been down that road of marriage, honey, you have no, well, well what have I got myself into? And, 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 and I don't understand this, and how can she be pregnant? And, 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 and on, and, and, and on. And he pondered, he thought on these things. Behold, why he's thinking. Angel shows up. Now let me just take a little side street here for a moment. It'd be good for some of us while we're pondering and thinking and praying and worshiping the Lord. It, it, it would be good if the angel of the Lord would show up and give us some answers sometimes. I'm like, Lord, if you can do it for Joseph, you can do it for Thomas. Amen. It'd be good for an angel to show up and just tell me all about the future and what's going on. It don't always happen that way, but it can. Angel shows up and tells Joseph, hey, buddy. Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and begin to unfold that plan. Number four tonight, Matthew was also saying to us that this had to happen because it was a fulfillment and a proof of prophecy. The book, as we call it, the Bible, written by numerous authors, all inspired and, cons and, and, and moved upon by the Spirit of God. And when I read this book, and I've read it cover to cover, and no doubt you have a time or two as well, you couldn't put that kind of story together over that many years, even if you wanted to. But the Spirit of God can. And I can be reminded of things in the Old Testament where it says this will happen and this will happen and this will happen. And we see it begin to take place in Matthew chapter 18 in the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus. It was done that it was a fulfillment and a proof of prophecy. The angel said it would be so. Now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, a, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which is interpreted. God with us. You can call it a coincidence. You can call it something else happened and we're not sure that, no. I, I'm just crazy enough to believe Mary was a virgin, conceived by the Holy Ghost, had a baby, his name was Jesus, to fulfill prophecy. It's just the way it was. And you need not let the world tell you anything different. Because we live in a world today when they want to that they want to twist and they want to turn and they want to manipulate and they want to make it out to be what they want it to be. No, it is what it is in Matthew chapter number one, verse number eighteen and twenty five. Can somebody say amen? amen? Number five tonight, Matthew is also telling us the shepherds the shepherds gave witness. Shepherds, some of the lowest people on earth, if you will, out in the sheep doing what out in the field, tending the sheep, doing what they do, and all of a sudden all of a sudden, the Lord chose to make this story known unto them. Now, will you allow me to put ourselves in the shepherd field just for a moment? Having a few staffs and a fire going by the side and keeping warm and counting all the sheep. So no doubt they named them Harry, Larry, Mo. You know how it goes. All got animals, you name them, don't you? I'm sure they named their sheep. And on this night, there happened to be something different. On this night, there happened to be an angel. There's that angel word again. An angel that showed up, and that angel in that shadow box tonight portrayed it real well and began to tell them what was going on. And suddenly there was a, a host of the heavenly angels. And they began to unwrap the story that, that had just happened. And the shepherds, when they had seen it, the, the, the great manifestation, they made known abroad the saying which was uh, told them concerning this child. Uh, and they that heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherd. Now, let's, we, we get the whole story because we, we get to read all of it at one setting. But could you imagine being those shepherds in that field that night? Not knowing what just happened over at the stable, you know? Not knowing that Mary has, has had a baby conceived of the Holy Ghost. But you're out there and all of a sudden an angel, an angel appears unto you. And then a bunch of angels, uh, I'd be scared, slapped to death. 
But because of their faith, go back to this morning, because they wanted to get from here to there, they said, let us go and see this thing which the Lord has made known unto us. At least they were willing to get up and do something. Let us remember the shepherds gave witness and we need to give witness to the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tonight as well. Number six, according to Matthew, the wise men's mysterious appearance. Now I know when we have a nativity setting we put the wise men at the, at, at the stable with the shepherds and we realize that's not exactly right but it paints a good picture and makes a good photo prop. But we realize that the, that the wise men showed up later in the picture. They were called wise men from the east and, and their question was in Matthew 2 where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star and have come to worship him. And they brought as portrayed tonight the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And King Herod heard this and was troubled. And and Jerusalem was troubled as well. And he wanted to know what the prophets had said about where Christ would be born. And the chief priests and scribes simply said in Bethlehem. Oh, they were wise men indeed. They saw his star and followed it a very long way. Herod called them to inquire about the time the star appeared. And when they left the king, the star went before them and stood over where the child was. See, when I want to go somewhere today, I just take my iPhone. And I punch in the address. And that voice comes on there. And most of the time, she's right. And she'll say, go here and turn left. And go here and turn right. They didn't have GPS back in Jesus' day. Unless you want to call it a heavenly GPS. Because they followed a star. Can you, now, just, just think about this. These wise men. Wise men following a star. And it's leading them to the place of Jesus. It reminds me of the old stories that I used to hear of the old church when people didn't know what to do and, 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 and didn't know where to go. They, they would find themselves in a season of prayer and the Holy Ghost would anoint them and the Holy Ghost would lead them and the Holy Ghost would guide them. I said, God, you can use the Holy Ghost. You can use a star. You can use a, a donkey. You can use men. You can use a GPS. If we'll just be sensitive to who the Spirit is trying to talk to, He will lead us and guide us in the path that He would have us to go and we will appear at the right spot to do the work that God's called us to do. You know the story of Herod. Herod said, well, come back and tell me all. You know, Herod had a different plan. And thankful those wise men were sensitive to the Spirit of God, to the instruction of the Lord, to the Word of the Lord. And they went home back to their country a different way. Number seven and lastly. Am I doing good on time? Number seven and lastly. Matthew tells us of the Holy Ghost revelation to Simeon. Simeon was a just and devout man waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And according to verse 26, it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. What a promise. You shall not see death until you see the Lord's Christ. Wow. A revelation that has been fulfilled in verse 28 and 30. And when he saw him, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let thy servant depart or die in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The Holy Ghost was upon His servant then. The Holy Ghost is upon His servants today. It was revealed unto Him then and it's revealed unto us now. He came by the Spirit into the temple then and we come by the Spirit into the temple or the church now. And the whole story seems to be wrapped up and encircled in the glory of God. Let's not make light of it with Santa Claus and reindeers. 
Let's not make light of it with snowmen and things of that nature. Let's not make light of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us not take away anything from the glory of God. Yes, the characters Mary and Joseph and Simeon and angels and angels and angels and prophets and the baby Jesus. Being warned of God, the angel appeared unto Joseph. We realize that. Rise, go back to Israel, fulfilling a, a prophet uh, Jeremiah's word. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The angel Gabriel appeared unto Joseph and said, Fear not, all of these things begin to work together for the glory of the God to settle upon the face of the earth. And it still blows my mind that Jesus did it because he loved you and I. He left all the splendor of glory to be born in a cold, damp, nasty manger and then lived a life of 33 and a half years, did not commit one sin. Oh, to have a child that is perfect. Lived a life of 33. Did I say that out loud? I did, didn't I? 33 and a half years. Died on Calvary's cross for you. Don't you let this world water down the gospel message of what happens at Christmas. Don't you let this world make light of our Lord and Savior. This is the Savior we believe that died for us and resurrected for us. And the Savior that we believe is going to rapture us out of here. Don't you let them water down the birth of your Lord and Savior. How dare us sit back and say, it's okay. Oh no. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 through 25 tells me what happened. And tonight we have officially kicked off the Christmas season here at our church. And it's not about snowmen and reindeer. It's about Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Stand with me across this setting tonight. Over the next few days and weeks, I encourage you, I encourage you to continually rejoice and magnify our Lord and our Savior. Can I encourage you to be able to, every day through this Christmas season, to be able to say, it is well with my soul. Can I encourage you to allow the words of, of Simeon to, to be a part of your life uh, when he says, and when he saw and took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant die in peace uh, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Not promised tomorrow, but if I leave here, I know where I'm going because I believe in this birth of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen for that tonight? Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for our children. Thank you for the program. Thank you, Lord, for the worship service. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have tonight to unwrap and unfold the Christmas story. Let us never take for granted, Lord, what it took to get Jesus to this earth. Let us never, Lord, forget the plan that was put in place so that your son could be born of a virgin to be our Savior. Lord, as we kick off this Christmas season, I pray that we'll let the joy of the Lord be our strength and be our life. Life and be our light to this world and we'll forever give you praise and honor and glory for it in the name of Jesus we pray and everybody said amen, amen. now here's your homework before you leave you got to find three people tonight and you got to tell them about Jesus right here practice here tonight because I'm trusting when you get out of these doors this week God's going to give you opportunity to say oh no it's not about snowmen and reindeer and Santa Claus uh, let me tell you what it's about and it's Matthew chapter number one Verses 18 through 25. God bless you. You are dismissed. Yes, sir.